object lesson for the day like you weren't expecting it and just out of the blue something hits your head and you're like I never really gave that a thought somebody did that to me this week how many here would love to take a piece of fire is it fiberglass is it fiberglass Braden? is that what your pole's made out of yeah. how who would like to take a fiberglass pole Stick it in a hole in the ground and try to catapult yourself up in the air. <laughs> Braden. <laughs> now, what's the object lesson here? Number one, why would we take our feet off the ground? Because nobody likes to leave the ground, right? But, Braden, do you have trust in your equipment, in your pole, that it's going to get you in the air and get you over that bar? Right? So... Brayden taught me a lesson this week. Don't do it. <laughs> but Brayden has that much trust in that pole that he's willing to jump off the ground. And not only the pole, but the mat on the other side. Would you jump over that pole if that mat was not on the other side to catch you? Probably. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. I know I would. <laughs> but do we have that much trust in the equipment that God gives us to get us through each and every day? It's just the thought that crossed my mind. Because when you have trust in your equipment, guess what happens? In this case, break one district. We can win two. Okay, that's the sermon. Let's go home. <laughs> now, let's run through the announcements here real quick. Don't forget tonight, 6 o'clock, is prayer, praise, and seat time. The church is open for prayer Sunday mornings uh, from pr for prayer as well from 7 to 8.30. Teenagers for Belleville Triple 3 scheduled for this Wednesday at 9 o'clock. I don't think it's supposed to rain, so you might actually have good weather. That's good. Uh, the the sign-up sheet is out in the foyer for anybody that didn't sign up that can make it. Uh, make sure you sign up today. And they're leaving here at 9. Wednesday night is the continued series, I Declare War, as well as our children's ministry. And then looking ahead to next Wednesday, the 29th, we're going to continue our community ministry. We're going to head to Donahue Home Wednesday night and um, have a service there with uh, everyone there inside, all the residents there at the building. Uh, so if anybody would like to ride the van, we're going to leave here around 5, get to the church, or get to Donahue by 5.30, because 
whoever's driving the van drives really slow, Linda said. I don't know. But uh, we're going to try to get some of the residents rounded up and, and have a good time of fellowship and worship with them. Looking ahead to June already, it's hard to believe that, you know, what well, today is graduation Sunday. We're honoring our graduates. School's almost out. Evelyn keeps reminding us she only has one more day, which is tomorrow. So all of the rest of you kids that are still in school, be jealous. <laughs> yeah. But uh, June 1st is the next Women's Bible Study and Breakfast. That will be at 8.30 at Kelly's. Youth, looking ahead, you've got uh, a youth luncheon as well as a camp out scheduled here in uh, June. There's sign-up sheets out in the foyer. I was trying to find a picture of Gavin eating, and this reminded me of Gavin when I saw it, so I had to use that one. Uh, also, in June, teenagers, you're going to have a birthday celebration on the 18th, so get that on your calendar as well. And kids, your summer School's Out Summer Splash Festival is June the 23rd. Uh, the month of May for Operation Christmas Child is Stuffed Animals, so if you haven't got your stuffed animals in, please do so. Uh, next month, we're going to try something new uh, in our collection, uh, so be prepared for that as well. For all other announcements, check out the website, the bulletin, and the calendar, and Facebook. forgot that one, too. And if the ushers would come, we will receive your morning ties and offerings. Will you join me in prayer this morning? Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for another wonderful day, a day that we can come into your house, Lord, and spend time with our family and friends. And Lord, just to be clo draw closer to you together as a group, knowing that you're there to meet our every need. Lord, as I was reminded this week, may we never lose trust in the faith, the word, and prayer, Lord, and all those other tools that you've given to us, Lord, to help us stay strong in you each and every day. Allow us to stand up and be that bright light in the dark world, Lord, that surrounds us. Bless these tithes and offerings that each are about to give, Lord, that they serve your kingdom purpose, Lord, in spreading your word to those that need to hear it. And Lord, just be with the service today as we prepare our hearts with the worship, as well as the word you've laid on the pastor's heart. And may we not forget each person that we honor at the end of this service, Lord, with their, that are graduating from high school or college. Lord, knowing that they're taking the next step in their life. And Lord, that they need that faith and trust in you to be able to continue forward. We thank you, Lord, we praise you. We give you all the glory and all the honor. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's stand. We know that weeping endures for a night, and joy comes in the morning. So whatever we brought with us this morning, let's just worship and accept his joy this morning.
the aisle. What Shannon just prayed was so important for us to hear today. Everyone here today goes through struggles, don't they? We all have needs. We all have issues. We all have plans that we desire that fall through. But we all have a Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, breathe on us. Breathe freshness of life in every soul that is here this morning and every person that's listening in online God I pray in the name of Jesus there would be a freshness of your anointing a freshness of your anointing to be placed upon each of our lives Lord where there is sickness may there be healing where there is disease and Lord where there is frustration and difficulty May there be healing in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for the anointing of your Holy Spirit to rest anew and afresh in our life. Not just in this place of worship, but wherever we go, God, I pray for the anointing upon the believers who are trusting you. And by faith, we would receive the answers to our burdens, the answers to our needs today. Because we're trusting Almighty God, Yahweh. Yahweh, breathe on us. May there be a fresh breath of life brought to every home that is represented here today. I pray for a fresh and a new touch of your Holy Spirit to go with us as we walk through this week serving you together. Oh God, the one on our right, the one on our left, we pray for them, Lord, today that the anointing of the Spirit of God would minister a special touch to them. That God would be glorified, that you would be magnified in every decision that's made. Lord, that we would have clarity of thought, and Lord, that we would be directed by you and you alone. And that Lord, when the decision's made, we will know truly that it's God who helped us to make that decision. And that we will see the clarity of your anointing upon our lives as we put our faith and our confidence and our trust in you alone. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will you lift a hand and praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Praise God. We love you, Lord. And we're grateful for all that you're doing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for the fresh breath of life. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Good morning, church. Good morning. Great to have you here today. It's great to see the center more full, isn't it? Yeah. It's great to see that. God bless you. Thank you for being in God's house today. I can't think of a better place to be right now than at Everett Assembly of God. Honestly, I can't. Uh, just uh, it's marvelous to be with you 
And if you're visiting with us, we are privileged that you're here. We're honored. Thank you for being a part of Everett Assembly of God. We are delighted to have you today. And we're going to let the kids go. God bless you guys. <clears throat> this is a special day. Now, <clears throat> I promise you the sermon will be actually shorter. And it's because I'm going to speak to the graduates. Yeah. I'm going to speak to uh, the students. But you can listen in. And it also applies to you. I don't care if you're 9 or 90. Right? It still applies to you. Amen? Amen. Doesn't matter. If, if I use the illustrations uh, as the graduates, then that's fine. But I really felt strong about doing this today. And at the end of the service, I would like us to honor them. And uh, we're going to ask them to come up and we're going to have prayer with them, pray over them. And uh, we're going to send them off with the blessings of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Normally, I would not preach a sermon that I've entitled uh, Formula for such and such. But this applies today. If I had to give a formula for success in life, these would be the three points that I would give for a formula for success. So I've titled the message today, Formula for Success for our future success. Formula for future success. Uh, no PowerPoint today. I want you just to zero in. You can follow along on your outline if you like. That would be great. And if 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, we're going to read 2 Timothy verse chapter 1, verse 7 is where we're going to read first. Just one verse of scripture to get us started today. All right, 2 Timothy 1, and reading in verse 7, and I'm reading from the NIV. For God did not give us a spirit of what? Timidity. But a spirit of a power of love and of self-discipline. Or some translations use, or self-control, which is both are really, really appropriate. Father, thank you for the reading of your word. Thank you for the power of your anointing. Lord, I thank you for the worship songs that we have sung this morning. I can feel the anointing of God in my own heart, in my own life. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the privilege to worship you. And so, Lord, we continue that worship today simply by sharing your word and your truth particularly to the younger generation today, that they would be strengthened and encouraged and more challenged today to honor the living God. We are blessed to serve you. And so together we share your word with confidence and assurance that you will work all things together for the good and the glory and the honor of our Heavenly Father. And we pray this in Jesus' name. And you can say once again, Amen. 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 There are some very real challenges when you go through school for 13 years. If you want to calculate from kindergarten up, I didn't go to kindergarten. Back in my day, you didn't have to. All right. And it was a choice. And besides, I wasn't ready. I was intimidated and scared and frightened and all those things. But, or if you have gone 13 years of high school, uh, you know, elementary, or 16 years if you've gone through four years of college, and then even more if you've got a master's degree on top of that, and even a doctoral degree, whatever. And some adults never quit teaching, or learning, or growing, or going to be in a student. Never stop learning. Doesn't matter how old you are, never stop learning. But going through life, we all have to meet some real challenges. And let me tell you, they will always be there no matter what your age is or what your occupation is. It doesn't matter. The best thing about facing these challenges is that we can have victories through them. You will have victories through them. Graduates, you have already faced challenges successfully. You have graduated successfully from the mother's womb. 
You adjusted to outside life. You graduated from infancy into your first days of school. You graduated from pre-adolescence and you navigated yourself through the teen years. And now you're graduating from high school or from college and now you have to travel the road of adulthood. It is a great transition. A lot of kids when they graduate from high school tell me that they're scared to death. They don't know what's really gonna come next. But how can you and all Christians become successful in your future? And we experience coming to an end of something is always the beginning of something else. When you come to the end of something, you're going to start something new. And we travel down many different roads to get to our future. Whether it's graduation from one institution to another, whether it's a changing of jobs, whether it's a transition of your family as it's growing, or whether you're moving to another part of the country or the world. We all have to travel that road for our future. <laughs> Most of us have to face our hearts beating rapidly, having the shortness of breath and having difficulty swallowing. Your knees are shaking. You become really hot and warm all over. That's the reaction you get when you stand up and give your very first speech. At least that was my reaction. My very first speech in high school scared to death. My first sermon ever scared to death. And somebody dared say to me, that was a great sermon and I knew it was awful. <laughs> Doesn't matter. You're always going to be frightened somewhere along the line. Everyone knows what it's like to be afraid. But one of the greatest hazards in life is fear. All fear is not bad. But all know what it's like to be afraid. All fear is not bad, but we do know what it's like to be afraid. And when we're kept from doing the things that God really wants us to do, sometimes we get the spirit of fear and we're literally paralyzed and it keeps us from doing the things that we should do or the things that we could do. It's super important. So with this in mind, I want to give you a formula for every graduate, every Christian needs this formula for success. We need to face our fears, our fears, forget our failures, and follow our faith. Those three things. And here's what I like to do with those three things, is I would like us to look at it from a biblical explanation and then give you some spiritual explanation on that and finally make a personal application to it. So first of all, we need to face our fears. Go back to 2 Timothy 1.7. The verse is very clear to us, is it not? For 2 Timothy 1.7. And for God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and self-discipline. Okay, now we understand what's the biblical explanation here. The word of God is full of fear nots. It's this verse we have the Apostle Paul writing to one of the youngest, youngest preachers ever to live. Timothy was not much older than you graduates from high school. And then our, uh, we understand that he was the pastor at Ephesus and Paul is his mentor. And one thing I would always recommend for all young people is to seek out a mentor for your life. Have somebody, my first pastor, I had a mentor who helped me along the way and he knew I was weak in certain areas. He helped me. Those weaknesses literally became my strengths because I had a mentor, somebody willing to take me. Take me under his wings. It's important. So in the first letter to Timothy, Paul told him not to let others intimidate him because of his age. He's afraid he's going to be um, inadequate because he's too young. You know, he lacked self-confidence. Now in this letter, Paul's telling Timothy that his spirit of fear is not of God. He's saying that it's a lack of confidence. It's not something God gave. God gives you confidence. God gives you assurance. For God did not give you a spirit of, of, of fear, but of power and a sound mind, a self-discipline, a self-control. 
That's what God is giving you. Amen. But what is the spiritual explanation to all that? Because as a Christian, we have the Holy Spirit that takes up residence in us. And he provides the continuous comfort that we need to eliminate those fears. God always gives us the ability to do what he demands us to do. Man, was I shaken in my boots. My goodness, I was shaken in my boots when God called me to ministry. I did not want to go in the worst way. I was so frightened, and I allowed fear to hold me back. I allowed fear to take a few years for me to actually get on track because I was fearful and afraid. My first sermon, my first pastorate, my goodness, I had so many fears, but you got to step out and do what you were fearing and find out that God will give you the confidence that you need to do it. Amen. He will always give you the confidence. We can love where others hate. We can be under control when others throw a fit because God loves us and he's called us. Max Lucado says this, fear doesn't want you to make the journey to the mountain. If you can rattle you enough, Fear will persuade you to take your eyes off the peaks and settle for the dull existence in the flatlands. You'll settle for less. The enemy will want you to settle for less. But what's the personal application to all that? Seniors living far away from home, it can be fearful going many, many miles. Most of us know that going for a job interview can be traumatic. Having to make a brand new friends is a real challenge. At least friends who understand you. God will even let us go through times when we may feel fear in order to, for us to start trusting him. He'll actually allow us to be fearful so we can trust in him, depend on him. So in order to overcome our fears, we have to learn to face them. And the way you face fears is to say yes to what is right in the eyes of God. He's saying yes to Jesus on the college campus when they try to stereotype you. Saying yes to godly lifestyle in a difficult job where they ridicule you because you don't listen to their off-color stories. You don't listen to their gossip stories from other employees and people. Facing your fears is being able to say no to the certain types of parties that are being willing to, 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 to spend nighttime all by yourself alone while everybody else out there is partying because you said, I'm going to do it God's way. Amen. God's way. Staying in a marriage that is at the dead end and facing those fears of unfulfilled expectations. It's saying yes to honesty and integrity in an academic world where honesty is not found, uh, uh, not always found uh, in a lot of ways. Let me tell you, it's amazing how many kids tell you as a teacher, the kids will tell you, like, can we just cheat a little bit? They'll do anything they can to cheat. One of the biggest battles we face is that of dishonesty, because dishonesty is rooted in fear. When you're fearful, you'll be dishonest sometimes. And even greater fear is fear of failure. That's the greatest fear of all. A rancher asked a veterinarian for some free advice. He says, I have a horse that walks normally sometimes, and other times he limps. What would you do? And here's his answer. He said, the next time the horse walks normal, sell him. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of an answer is that? What kind of integrity is that? The norm today is to be dishonest. It takes courage to be honest on a resume. It takes courage to be honest on an exam and being fair in business dealings. We are without excuse because God has promised the necessary power, the love, the self-control to help you get the job done and stand alone if necessary. Amen. There was a test conducted by a university of 10 students. And this test had a big card that drew three lines 
That's all they were, is three lines. And those three lines, are one. they were all different sizes. One was the longest, and the middle one, and then the, the shortest one. And uh, out of those 10 students, nine students were told when they see the longest line, they're to pick the one that is the middle one, not the longest one. Nine of them were told, you pick the one that's a little shorter, and you raise your hand. There was one stooge left, wasn't told anything. So when they would have the card up front, they would all look at it, and they would say, okay, what's the longest line? And uh, they say, is this the longest line? And nobody's hands are up, but the one stooge, his hand goes up, and as soon as he sees nobody else's hands up, his hand is going down. It's gone down. When everybody else put their hand up with the middle line, he went ahead with everybody else and put his hand up. Now this was tested over and over from elementary school all the way through high school. And it so happened that 75% of the time, students from grade school through high school, like all of them did not want to stand alone. The majority of the people would put their hand down quickly if nobody else was raising their hand. You see, people don't want to stand alone. They don't want to be by themselves, do they? Now's the time for every Christian to face their fears and firmly with confidence in God, never ever take your cues from the crowd. Amen. Don't take your cues from the crowd. Amen. Take them from God. And if our fears don't keep us from having success, Satan will try to use your failures to navigate you off of course. Stay the course. Stay steady. So first thing is to understand is we need the fear of God. Somebody say amen. amen. The fear of God. Number two, we need to forget our failures. Philippians chapter 3. Chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. We can put that on the screen for you. Philippians 3, 12 through 14. This is the biblical explanation for this. Paul is in prison. He's chained to a Roman guard. These are very, very poor conditions. In fact, the conditions are so poor that literally, guess what's happening? Paul doesn't even have a place to write. He has to write on a rock or a stone of some sort. And he wrote, not that I've already attained this, that is... I have not already been perfected, made like Christ in every way, but I strive to lay hold of that which Christ Jesus also, also laid hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have obtained this level of maturity. Instead, I am single-minded, forgetting the things that are behind, reaching out the things that are ahead, and with this goal in mind, I strive toward the prize of the upward call in who? Christ Jesus. Paul made many, many mistakes in his life. He had to forget a lot of those major mistakes that were in his life. He was a persecutor of Christians. He literally killed Christians before, before his salvation. What he's saying is, in this letter to the Philippians, is that he's enrolled in the university of Christ-likeness. His course of study would prepare him to live like the Lord. And in this school, he would not be perfect because he took classes that taught him the subject that he needed to be successful. But he understood that he would fail even after he knew better. We all fail. Come on, you adults say amen. amen. We all fail. But he understood that when we fail, after we know better, his goal was to be focused on the Lord so that his failure, he would not lose heart. And if he kept his goal in mind, then what he would mature through those mistakes. He would learn through them. So what's the spiritual explanation of that? Paul's explaining here that he refuses to allow failures to be destructive in his life. And he allows those failures to take him off the path that God was leading him for that goal. I refuse to go off. I will stay on the path that God had planned for me. The secret 
To forgetting our failures is to put our past behind us and to have a positive attitude for the present life before us. The present life and the life to come. We will all have failures that are not, we're not proud of. But remember, if you've never failed, you've never tried anything. Amen. Failures can make us quit trying. That's what Satan wants you to do. He wants us to quit so we cannot attain the goal that God has for you. In the middle of World War II, Oxford University asked Prime Minister Churchill to do the commencement speech. We're told that he got up, and when he got up, the first words out of his mouth were three words, never give up. <laughs> never give up. There was a pause. The pause was kind of lengthy. And then finally, he decides to speak again. Those same words, never give up. A pause. A few moments later, he walks over to his cane, picks his cane up, puts his hat on, and walks off the stage. His speech is done. Never give up. Did you hear me? What did I just say? Never give up. Never give up. So what's that personal application to you? What are some very important goals in your life? Start thinking about those goals. Are they goals that will help you to focus on the Lord and his church? Are you applying your goals to begin to work with, you know, and, and remember that the only steps to reach your ultimate goal for eternity is to put God first. Amen. We have to ask ourselves, is this goal going to glorify God? And he, what he actually wants for my life? Is it helping me become more mature Christian? If I fail at some point in achieving my goal, will I be willing to repent of that and then accept God's forgiveness? And guess what? Yes, leave it behind. Gone. There's a final piece to this formula. If our future is to be a great success, and that is we need to follow our faith. Follow our faith. Go to Hebrews chapter 12, if you would, with me. Verses 1 through 3. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who is for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Man, the book of Hebrews was written to Christians who were struggling in their faith. They were really struggling. They were going through some hard times that caused their faith, faith to actually waver. So what they're told to do in this passage is to give up because those who were before them were witnesses. Don't give in. Don't give up because the people who went before you are great witnesses to you. So the writer says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. See, this is a really strong encouragement to listen up, to hear what we have to say. What are your witnesses saying? What are your parents who serve in God saying to you? What, what is your church family saying to you? What are your relatives who are serving God? What they're going before you? What are they saying to you? We have to get rid of every weight and sin that gets us tangled up and off course and off running to the wrong course. 
Follow the course that God's laid out for you. Run with endurance. Have faith that will make you strong in those weak times and those times when you struggle because you will have weak times. You will struggle. There will always be struggling as long as we're on this earth. Have a faith that will make you strong. We are saying, look up. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep running the race. You're going to win the race just like Brady did. He became number one, right? Why? Because he kept his eyes on that race. You can't be number one without, without staying in the race and being committed to it. Amen. Be the perfecter of your faith. We are to think of Jesus himself who endured the cross and yet he did it with joy. Compare yourself to the one who had reason to give up, and yet he suffered. He had every reason to give up. So what's my spiritual explanation of that? Because the writer of Hebrews here is establishing that all runners need to reference a reference point to running the race. When you're running in a spiritual race, you have to have a reference point. If you're lost and you're trying to find your way, you've got to get your reference point. Where are you? North, east, west, south? Well, you get the reference point and you can start knowing where you need to go. We're told on day six of the Apollo 13 mission, the astronauts had to make a critical course correction. Some of you probably saw the movie way back in 1995. An old movie, but a lot of the kids I know have watched that movie. And they, they would actually have failed in their mission, but for one thing. They had to turn off the computer system that actually steered the spacecraft. They had this one little tiny window in which they could look out of. And one of the astronauts made a very smart and intelligent decision saying, look, if, if we keep our eyes focused on one thing and one thing only, we can steer this ship where it needs to go. And guess where their eyes were? Their eyes were on the earth. The earth, the planet. And they kept their eyes on the earth and they reached their destination because they were focused. It could have been a great disaster. If we're going to finish our life's mission successfully, keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Our faith is not in faith. Our faith has to be the one who is the perfecter of our faith, and his name is Jesus Christ. Keep your eyes on him. So what's the personal application? It's true that we have to learn to be flexible. In life, you've got to be flexible. But when it comes to Jesus, he's your reference point. You can't afford to budge one little bit. Because it's easy to become distracted by the world, especially that first year when you leave home and you're on your own and you are not accountable to mom or dad or anyone else, the only person you're accountable to and you will always be accountable to is Jesus Christ. Amen. Always. It'll be tempting to get distracted and get our attention away from God. It's easy to let your church attendance slide because you're not in your home church anymore. You have to find another place of worship. Your daily time with the Lord can slip away because your parents aren't there to guide you and lead you. Who's going to keep you accountable? Uh, you see, it's important that you get tied into ministry that will help you to navigate your life. Remember, there's those who've gone before you who are the great witnesses. They've shown you the way. They know what it means. You've seen it. You've seen the great cloud of witnesses before you. You know that they've made it. You can too. Remember them. The rooting that you already have. Your greatest challenge will be to follow your faith. Follow your faith. A young man was ready to graduate from college. He came from a very, very wealthy family. 
extremely wealthy that the father could afford to buy the young man a sports car. So the young man had his eyes on this sports car and he knew for sure he was gonna get this for graduation. He talked it up to his dad, graduation came, <clears throat> his dad called him into his study, handed him a, a box, he opened it up, and in the box, after his dad told him how much he loved him, how proud he was of him, how much he, he really appreciated what he did and what he's gonna be able to do as a, his future son, he was excited about it. Opens up and it's a Bible. And the young man got mad and angry and stomped out of the house. Angry, this is all you got me when you can afford to get me a lot more than this? And he stomped out and for years he never spoke to his dad. Until later in years, he got a message that his father had passed away. He goes back to his home. His dad left him his total estate. He finds the Bible that he threw down and left angry, picks it up, looks at the Bible, flips through it, and here's what he finds in that Bible in Matthew 7, verse 11. And if you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more does your heavenly Father, who is in heaven, give good gifts to those he loves? Mm -hmm. Or ask him. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, he opens the Bible a little more, and inside that Bible falls out a key to a car, the very car he longed for. And on those keys, it said, paid in full. Paid in full. As he read those words, it brought tears to his eyes. He began to cry. Let me ask you something. How many times have we missed God's blessing because it didn't come packaged the way we expected it to? Things don't always come packaged the way we want them to. Things don't always work out as we plan them to. Life will not always come packaged with what we think we want or what we like to have. It comes packaged better than that when you face your fears, when you forget your failures, and when you follow your faith. Amen. You can't get a better package than that. A sports car is not going to ever do it. It's not going to win the world. What's going to win success for you <laughs> is to follow God wholeheartedly. Amen. Doesn't matter what the favorite market the thing is that you could purchase or buy. Your riches are in his word. The greatest thing that young man could have ever received at graduation was that Bible. Because that was his path to life. Eternal life. Your riches are in his word. And after all, God can afford everything. He owns it all. Amen. Hallelujah. So graduates, face your fears. Forget your failures, but follow your faith in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Father, thank you for the word. Thank you for our graduates. They're such precious young people. They're such a blessing to us at Everett Assembly of God. Mm -hmm. Lord, we're, we're just so privileged today to be able to honor them. And I pray, Lord, that we as adults and those of us who have been Christians for a long time, we still need this same message. We still need to be reminded, Lord, that you're the reason we live. You're the reason for life. You're the reason that life will be successful because we follow you. May you be praised and honored in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, we're so privileged today to honor six graduates today. And I'm going to ask you to do me a favor when I call your name. Some of them could not be here today, but you don't even have to face everybody. You face me, okay? All right? So um, for
First of all, Asa Bartman. Asa is not here today. She was unable to make it. She's graduating from Bedford High School. Braden Kane, Bedford High School. Come on up. Please. Samara. She's not here. Oh, she's graduating from Everett High School. And Sawyer is graduating from Southern, or not Southern, uh, but I wanted to keep Southern Fulton, Central Fulton, Central Fulton. Jonathan Wood is graduating from Hancock High School. And Jonathan is our miracle young man. See him back there? Miracle, buddy. You're a miracle. Praise God. Praise God. Elena Morris is graduating. Alana, yeah. I, well, it's spelled differently. Alana, I know who you are. Okay, we pray to go. Come up here, guys. You might be few in number, but that's okay. We're, we still want you up here, but come right up here. And look, look at me, Lizzie. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Okay, great. <laughs> All right. I want the deacon board to please come, would you? Would you come? And the rest of you stand, would you? I want to tell you guys something. What's the worst thing you hated about school? You in college, what's the worst thing you hated? Uh, group projects. Um, group projects? Yeah. Oh, group projects. I like those because I could help, other people could help me. <laughs> Not the case. Not the case. You'd rather do it yourself. What did you, what did you like, hate the most in high school? My fitness teacher. Your fitness teacher. <laughs> oh. Okay. I'll tell you, the worst thing, I'll be honest with you, honest. the worst thing I hated in school, whether it was college or high school, was tests. I hate tests. Did you like them? <laughs> no, it was okay. Bearable. Well, you didn't know how dumb I was. When it came to testing, I would freeze. But let me tell you something. You say, well, glad the tests are over, but the tests will always be there in life. They come in different styles, in different ways, in different manners. They'll always be there. And I thank God that he always has a way out and through. And I know that God has something special planned because you guys were created by God for a purpose and a plan that's even beyond what you can think or imagine. And we're going to trust and believe God in your behalf. And God will lead you and guide you and direct you. Praise God. Lord, let's pray. Let's pray. Father, thank you for each of these graduates. Thank you for the blessing that they have been to us. Thank you for the courage they've had, Lord, to do the hard work, to do the laboring. Lord, I praise you and thank you that they met the challenge and they walked through, Lord, that door and they go to a new door that will open. And that challenge, Lord, for them that's waiting, that test or that challenge that they go through, I pray that, Lord, they will look to you. From where all your help will come from is not from all the other people around them, but it will come directly from you. I pray that you would give them the desires of their heart, that they will seek you wholeheartedly, that, Lord, they will allow the anointing of the Holy Spirit to lead and guide and direct them. All when the fears come, I pray, Lord, that they will step out in faith and believe, God, that you have not given them a spirit of fear, but of power and of a sound mind. Lord, I pray, Lord, when they fail, that they will be able to pick themselves up and say, yes, I've made a mistake. That I ask God to forgive me and that I leave it in my past and I walk this life in Jesus Christ. And Lord, there will be times that their faith will be tested. But Lord, I pray that we will keep our eyes on you, on the prize, that we will focus on Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Bless them richly. God, I pray that they will be blessed beyond measure. Lord, that they will they will receive the, the jobs that they need, the desire, jobs that they even desire. And Lord, I pray that they will be a blessing to others, that they too, as they grow and mature in you, they too will be able to help others that are young in heart and that will come closer to you because of their relationship and their desire to serve you. Bless them. 
Protect them, provide for every provision. We place them in your hands now with knowing that you will make them a great success for your glory and for your honor. And we pray this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Congratulations, guys. Way to go, buddy. Good job. You're dismissed, by the way. I'm really good. I love it. Remember those years? Yeah. Uh -huh.